Do you need protein powder to build muscle? That's what we're going to be breaking down in this video. Before we kick off though, I just ask you to please consider subscribing to my channel. We just hit 8,000 literally a couple of days ago, so if you could please subscribe, that would mean the world to me. I'm really trying to grow this channel and be more consistent. Now, back to the video, let's go. In this video, we're going to break down a few things. What protein is important for? How much protein do you actually need? What protein powder is made up of? And how we actually build muscle? And how protein powder comes into the situation? Firstly, what is protein important for? From a body composition standpoint, protein is important for muscle maintenance whilst you're cutting. So maintaining your muscle mass, it's also important while you're cutting to keep you full. So protein is one of the most satiating macronutrients out of them all. So we have protein, we have carbs, we have fats, we also have alcohol, but we kind of just look at it as protein, carbs, and fats. And out of all three, protein helps us feel the most full. So it's important to consume protein whilst we're cutting, also whilst we're bulking or trying to maintain weight as well. But when you're cutting, it helps you to stay full. The last thing I'll say, it helps us build muscle mass as well, the amino acids, help us with the muscle protein synthesis and ultimately building muscle. So that's why it's important. But how much protein do we actually need? A good place to start, and this, and is, this a is a really, really broad, broad range, range. is 1.5 grams of protein per kg of body weight, all the way up to 2.5 grams per kg of body weight. That is quite a large range. So if someone weighs 100 kg, which is over 200 pounds, you would have a 150 grams of protein per day as a minimum and 250 grams of protein per day as a maximum, okay? And before you say, oh, protein's bad for your kidneys, the research suggests that not really, unless you go over four grams per kg of body weight, which would be like over 400 grams of protein per day, and that's a lot. A lot. To reach that amount is just crazy. You'd literally have to be drinking protein shakes all day and eating chicken breast. A high protein diet is safe regardless of what some people will say. The research suggests that yeah. it's pretty safe. So how do you determine where you are on that range? So if you are 1.5 grams or more toward the lower end of the spectrum, you would be of higher body fat percentage. So you would have more fat on your body. If you were really lean, protein is muscle sparing. So you would have a higher amount of protein in your diet because it would help you maintain your muscle mass, even if you're building or cutting or maintaining. So depending on how lean you are, really depends on how much protein you need. It also depends on what program you're following with weights training as well, but I don't wanna to get too confusing. The main thing we need to look at is, let's say you're 15% or under for body fat, you'd want to be on the higher end of protein. If you are 15% or greater, you could afford to be a bit lower on the protein because you carry more body fat. What's protein powder actually made up of? So this is an interesting fact, protein powder a whey protein powder is made up of the offcuts of cheese or the watery fluidy part that's left over when creating cheese. Now let's look at building muscle. How do we build muscle? So nutrition is only one part of it, but one thing we need to understand about building muscle is nutrition cannot purely drive muscle mass. Your muscles need a stimulus to respond to to get a muscle building response. If you just have a high protein diet but you don't lift weights, or you don't do any working out at all, you're not going to build muscle, unfortunately. So the biggest piece of the puzzle that you have to face is building muscle requires you to work out. It requires you to give your body a stimulus that it hasn't received before to get a response. And then that is how we build muscle. So when we're looking at building muscle, we obviously have our training and we need to train hard enough or close enough to failure to actually give our body that response. So training is a big part. But one thing we have to do after training is recover. So train hard, recover hard. That's something I like to say. So you also need to recover hard. How do we recover? It's not sitting around rolling your legs on a foam roller. It's getting adequate sleep. Okay, so that helps you recover. And also recovery is calories. So if you're not eating enough, you're probably not going to build muscle. If you're in a calorie deficit, it's good for fat loss, but it's not good for building muscle because you're not consuming enough calories to encourage that process. If you're in a calorie surplus, on the other hand, and you have an abundance of calories or an abundance of energy to help you synthesize muscle and encourage the process, then it's going to be easier for your body. So recovery, optimizing the muscle building process is done through a calorie surplus. So that helps you 
recover better. Adequate sleep is a big one as well. So that's part of your recovery. Sleeping seven to nine hours is the best way to guarantee good recovery. A lot of people say, oh, I'm still sore in the morning. Oh, you know, I'm not feeling recovered and they're sleeping five to six hours. That's why, mate, you need to sleep seven to nine hours. And I know a lot of you may have kids or a lot of you may not be able to get that amount. Try and do as much as you can, right? There's lots of things you can do with sleep. I have a podcast on it. Uh, the podcast is called Better With Brock and I chatted with a client of mine who's literally a research scientist in sleep and he offered tons of tips to get better sleep. So make sure you check that out, the Better With Brock podcast. It might have been episode two, somewhere three or four, uh, but that's really great for giving you tips to get better sleep. So that's ultimately how we build muscle, right? We have to train and then there's, there's lots of things that fall under training, like you have to follow the right program, you have to get... Uh, close enough to failure, you have to make sure that you're recovering enough uh, in between training muscle groups, uh, but training is a big part. Then you have recovery, which is your sleep, uh, which is your nutrition as well, which is a huge part. And then you have your stress as well. So trying to minimize stress is going to help you recover. Now, it's easy to say, hey man, just stress less. It's not as easy as that, I understand that, but if you can introduce stress management tools into your life, then that is going to help you recover better and therefore get better results in the gym. So that is how we build muscle, right? But how does protein powder come into this? Well, it's a really small part, and that's really just trying to help us hit our protein target, which as we talked about before, is somewhere between 1.5 grams per kg of body weight to 2.5 grams per kg of body weight. That is literally the only role that a protein powder is going to play in you building muscle. Protein powder doesn't make you train harder. Protein powder doesn't make you sleep better. Protein powder doesn't make your recovery any better. It just helps you hit your protein target, which can help your recovery actually, but protein, protein powder, powder is, is not, not necessary, necessary for, building for building muscle. If you hit your daily protein target without protein powder, then that's completely fine. You don't have to consume protein powder to build muscle. Sorry to break it to you, and I'm sorry if the supplement companies have told you that you do need whey protein powder to build muscle or plant-based protein powder, whatever fits your dietary uh, restrictions or limitations, you don't need it. I literally put a scoop of protein in my smoothie every morning just because it gives it better flavor and it does help me hit my protein target. But that's the only benefit. I don't build better muscle because I have a scoop of protein. If I hit my protein target throughout the day through eating whole foods, let's say meat or milk, or eggs or other plant-based sources of protein, that would still be fine. I would still get the same results as I would if I consumed protein. The good thing about protein powder is it's very convenient, so you can literally just put it in uh, a shaker, mix it with water, drink it, and you've just hit 20 to 30 grams of protein depending on the company that you use. So it is convenient, it's a great source of protein because you can take it around and you can scoop it in your oats, you can scoop it in your yogurt, you can scoop it in your smoothie, and it's going to increase your protein intake, but that's about it, right? There's nothing magical about the protein inside of a protein powder, it's just convenient and it helps you hit your goals that way. So hopefully this gives you clarity, right? On this YouTube channel, I'm trying to give you some clarity and give you some non-bullshit strategies to actually get some results because there's a lot of people out there and I'm not trying to call out anyone, but there's a lot of people on YouTube, there's a lot of people on Instagram, there's a lot of people on Facebook, there's a lot of people everywhere in the fitness industry trying to sell you on some bullshit to make money from you, right? And sure, I make money if you work with me for personal training or online coaching, okay? That's how I make my money. So I'm not gonna hide that, but I think it's unfair if you're getting led astray from these people just so that they can financially benefit. So I'm here to try and give you some truth so you can make a decision on your own of how to get results or under someone else's coaching or under my coaching or, or you simply just getting tips and knowledge so that you can make your own decision when you're deciding what to eat, whether to have protein, whether to train this or that. That's all I'm trying to do, guys. So if you enjoy the content, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow this channel and be more consistent. And I'll see you in the next video. Appreciate it. See ya.